Hi, my name is Carly Malone and I'm a screen reader analyst for the Digital Accessibility Centre and I test a range of digital products such as websites using a range of screen reading software packages such as non-visual desktop access which is NVDA for short which is a free screen reader and JAWS which stands for Job Accessibility with Speech and that's a paid for screen reading software package. I test websites and other applications in line with the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.0 as well as based on my experience as a, as a user who browses the internet with some, as someone who's visually impaired and who can't see the screen. A screen reader allows me to browse a website by relaying on-screen information to myself which, which enables me to listen to the computer. So when I'm looking at a website, I am looking for the information on that site to be as descriptive as possible. So for example, I'm looking for links to be descriptive so I know where they're going. And I'm looking for things like forms to be clear so that I can undertake what I need to achieve by visiting that, that particular site. I am now going to, to test the Digital Accessibility Centre website using NVDA. There are two main ways of browsing a site using a screen reader like NVDA. These are browsing in context and browsing out of context. Browsing in context means using the screen reader to listen to the entire website from top to bottom so you get every single piece of information on the page. This can be done by pressing insert and cursor down. Traffic skip navigation link skip navigation traffic accessibility statement link accessibility traffic site map link site map link link A link list with seven items bullet visited link home bullet link about bullet link services bullet link client. We're now going to use control to pause the reading. As you can see, Listening to the page in context, although it's possible to get all the information we need from doing that, because of the nature of the page, it would take us a very long time to get to a particular section. So this takes me on to browsing out of context. And to do that, we're going to use a combination of different keystrokes so that we can look at each type of element separately. For example, Insert an F7 will bring up a list of our links. Elements list style, client set on 51. Level 0. Services 9 on, home 6 on 51. A fine zip, home 7 on, about 8 on 50. Services 9 on, client set on 51. Level 0. So what we're getting now is the links have been lifted from the page and we're just getting link text. Services 9. Resources 11 on 5, contact 12 on Australia 30, what do we do dot dot, start 15 on 51 level 0. So what we've got here, there's a descriptive link of what we do, which is very um, descriptive. I, I would know from, from entering onto that link that I could find out a bit more about who the Digital Accessibility Centre are and the work they do. For example, though, there follows a couple of links which are stop and start. Stop 16 on 51 level 0. Previous 17 on 51 level 0. Next 18 on 51 level 0. Now these are examples of links such as next, previous, which I would be a little bit confused about what they mean. So I would be a bit concerned about entering onto a link with such a short description because I wouldn't know what to expect. I'm now going to go on to our, our new website for the Digital Accessibility Centre, which is currently under construction. But I'm able to show you how form fields are tested using NVDA. Unlike headings and links where there is a designated keystroke, testing for a form field is a bit more straightforward. We simply just type F for form fields. And we could just do Shift and F to go back to a previous one. On this occasion, the form fields are labelled quite 
descriptively. It's quite clear. It's quite clear. It's a search. And it's quite clear that we can just enter onto the button to submit a query. Um, normally, the most common issues that we may get with the form field is, for example, it might be unlabeled, in which case we'll just get unlabeled edit field or unlabeled button. Or we might get a list of radio buttons or check boxes where there's no text surrounding them, so we don't know whether they're there. But on this occasion, the form fields are labelled correctly. I am now going to test the Digital Accessibility Centre website using VoiceOver with my iPhone 4S. And again, like with desktop screen reader users, there's two ways of browsing a website. We can browse in context and out of context. Browsing in context basically means listening to the website in its entirety so we get every single bit of information from top to bottom of the page. And this can screen be done locked. by doing a diagonal swipe with my two fingers across the screen. I shall show you, I shall show you that. 1440. Slide to unlock. So, digital Accessibility Centre. Link. Image. Landmark start. Digital Accessibility Centre. Link. Image. Landmark start. Search. Ellipsis. Multi-line text field. Landmark start. Client login. Pop-up button. Landmark end. Cube greater than I found the whole accreditation process simple and effective from a customer. We work with you to improve the accessibility of your digit. Read our testimonials. Ellipsis. Link. So I've now placed one finger on the screen to read about our pause user the testing. reading. Read about our user testing. Ellipsis. Link. We work with you to improve the we cube greater than we work with the digital accessibility center. Link. Image. Landmark start. So we can see again from looking at the page, although browsing in context would allow us to get all the information we need, because we're looking at the entire web page, it would take a long time. So I'm now going to show you how we browse out of context. And to do this, we do, we use a rotor, which basically means placing our fingers on selected selected heading web page loaded links digital accessibility center visited link image landmark start search ellipsis multi-line text client login pop-up button inquire button form control not found links 15 links follow us on twitter visited link so this list start allows us just to look at the links we are a team of accessibility on the page. follow us on twitter join us on linkedin Join us on Facebook, Joomla, link, new general public license, Joomla, link. So the social media links are quite straightforward. And I know from entering on one of those links, we'll enter a Twitter feed or we'll enter a LinkedIn page. That's quite clear. However, there's a, there's a link called Joomla, which I'd be quite confused about. I wouldn't know what to expect from implementing that link. I shall now show you headings. how we look at headings. Six headings. And again, we do the rotor system again. And then we just going to swipe. Circular down. design pattern with keyboard used blog. Heading level two. Contact. Heading level two. Resources. Heading level two. Clients. Heading level two. We work with the cross section clients. Heading services. Heading level two. About. Heading level two. Heading not found. So as you can see, all the headings on the page have level twos. We look at a heading structure because a heading structure which is hierarchical and logical to us is the same as looking at a contents page in a book or looking at a newspaper. So we expect the main heading to have a H1 tag. That to me would signify, okay, this is the eye-catching heading. This is the important one. And then headings with H2 tags and H3 tags would be the subheadings. And I would be able to know from looking at the heading structure Screen dimmed. that one heading is related to the next heading which follows on. Powerful suite of digital exit you lines words suite select I'm characters. going to show you how Edit. to browse form Images. fields now. Search fields, text field, buttons, non visited link, visited link, landmarks, lists, 
tables, form controls, three form controls. And again, we're going to use the water system to do this, and then we just Inquire. swipe down. Button, form control not client login, pop up button, search, ellipsis, client inquire, button. So these form fields are quite clearly labelled. We know that one of them is a search. We know that the the button can be used to submit a query. And we know that the client login has a pop-up. Sometimes when we browse a site, we come across form fields that have been unlabeled. Or we might get problems where the radio buttons and checkboxes don't contain any text. So then we'd be unclear as to what the question is that's been asked, or we'd be unsure which one to, to tick. I'm now going to show you how we, how we browse the images. Links, headings, six lines, words, character, images, seven images. And again, we're going to swipe down. Circular design pattern with keyboard user image, image, blog logo, image, contact icon, image, resources item, image, client's logo, image, services icon. A powerful suite of digital accessibility services such as bespoke testing, services icon, about icon, cube greater than I found the whole accreditation process simple, start, link. So these images in the main are icons, and we can be clear about what the icons are. There is an example of an image of a testimonial, which contains some additional characters like, like extra letters and punctuation marks. In a situation like that, we would say that the image needs to be given an alternative text attribute. This enables us to have access to the same amount of information as anybody else who will be browsing the site. Other images, such as photos or other images which have been given decorative purposes, need to be given another attribute. This tells the screen reading software, such as VoiceOver, to ignore the image so that we wouldn't necessarily need to know it was there. This prevents information overload on our part.